Last week, Google Music officially opened to the public, complete with an online music store and an official Android app. In this video, you will learn about just what it is and how it works. Whether you haven't made up your mind to try Google Music or you are a new user who wants some insight on how to get the most out of it, this video should hopefully answer some of your questions. To get to Google Music, go to the main Google page and open the More menu at the top. When the drop-down list appears, below More, select Even More from the bottom. That will take you to the Google Products page where you will need to scroll down to Google Music. Assuming you have a music library you wish to upload to Google Music, the first thing you will want to do is download the Music Manager. This is a client for uploading the files from your computer. It can also download songs from Google Music so you don't have to stream them from Google to listen. You can install it on multiple computers, and there is also an Android Google Music app, which we'll talk about a little later. Once the Music Manager has finished downloading, you can install it. In the first step of the wizard, you will need to provide your Google account information. The Stay Signed In option doesn't work like you might think. As long as the Music Manager is running, it will stay signed in. If you sign out, you will get a dialog prompting you to either sign back in or quit. What this option does is make it possible to start the Music Manager without entering your login and password. If you quit Music Manager and then start it again with this unchecked, you will have to enter your password. There is also an option on the Music Manager login dialog where you can enable this at any point in the future. Click Next to continue with the Install Wizard. By default, the Music Manager is set to look for an iTunes library to import music from. If you don't use iTunes, or if you simply want to specify the folder to upload music from, you can select it here. If you select Other Folder, you will have to find and select the folder where the music you want to upload is stored. If you aren't sure where the folder with your music is, you may want to try My Music as many programs save music there by default. Other programs, particularly if they are older, will default to My Documents. Of course, you can also select a completely different folder. Once you have the import location selected, you will get a message telling you how much storage you have left. Rather than setting a megabyte or gigabyte limit, Google limits you to uploading 20,000 songs regardless of their size. Keep in mind, several formats, including MP3, AAC, also known as M4A, WMA for the Windows client only, and FLAC are supported. Just remember that any file which isn't already in MP3 format will be converted. Next, you will be asked if you want songs in the folders you specify for music to be automatically uploaded. That means if you add a new song to the folder, the Music Manager will immediately upload it, assuming you have an active internet connection. If the Music Manager isn't running, the new songs won't be uploaded until you start it again. Finally, you will be shown what the Music Manager icon will look like in the Windows Notification area, which is in the lower right corner of your screen normally. You will be able to use this to open or quit Music Manager later. Once again, more on that in a bit. Finally, your music will begin uploading. Depending on the number of songs you upload and the upstream speed of your internet connection, this may take a few minutes or a few hours. If your collection is large enough, it could even take multiple days. At this point, you can continue on to the Google Music website 
while your music uploads. Now we'll take a look at the Google Music Store, which is really just part of the Android market. There you can find music to buy, and even some songs, for free. Let's look at the free options first. The initial free songs page shows you a selection of songs representing various types of music. To add a free song to your Google Music library, simply click on the Free button. This is really a purchase button which lists the price. In this case, the price just happens to be nothing. Once you start the purchase process, you may be prompted to sign in. This is actually a sign in to Google Checkout. Even though you are paying nothing for the song, you still have to go through the checkout process. Once again, it's actually a purchase for zero dollars and zero cents. The first time you buy music through the Android market, even if it is free, you will be prompted to agree to the Google Music Terms of Service. Now you can complete the transaction. If you don't already have a payment method listed with Google Checkout, you will be required to do so before proceeding any further. You can close the purchasing dialog at this point. In addition to the sampler, which lists a wide range of tracks, you may prefer to select a free music category to see more selections from a particular genre of music. Just like the general sampler page, these pages will list a selection of free songs. They will just be more narrowly focused on a particular category of music. So now that you know how to get free songs, let's take a look at the main page of the music store. Near the top, you will find a small number of albums selected by Google Music employees. You can use the boxes below the album thumbnails to see more, or you can use the See More link to bring up an even larger number of albums. To the left, you will see a list of popular tracks. Further down on the left is a list of popular albums, and to the right will be the free song of the day, which is exactly what it sounds like, a single song which is free that particular day. Keep going down, and you will see Google's suggestions for music. This will be based on the music you have in your library, and your browsing history in the Android market. If you want to narrow down the selection of music shown, you can select a particular genre. When you select a type of music, you may also find there are more specific categories under it. The page for each category is very similar to the main music store page. There are staff picks for albums, and you can see a larger list by clicking on See More. Not surprisingly, since we are talking about a Google product, you can also search for music. 
The search results will include artists, albums, and tracks. When you click on an artist link, you will get a variety of information, including a short biography, a list of their most popular tracks, and a list of genres Google has categorized them in. Below the biography will be a list of albums. Below that, you will see similar artists, or at least artists Google's algorithms find similar. Sometimes the results leave something to be desired. As with the other lists of music in the store, you can choose to see more. Now that we've looked at adding music to your library, let's look at the library interface. There is a Home section with the most recently added music and suggestions from the music store based on what's in your library and also what you've looked at in the store. Other sections sort your library by Song, Artist, Album, and Genre. There is also a Playlist section showing you the songs you've added most recently the songs you've rated with a thumbs up, and the songs you've gotten from the music store. There is a button next to each song title where you can bring up a menu with several options. If you need to remove a song from your library, you can do that here. This menu includes other options as well. You can have Google Music make an instant mix, which is an automatically generated playlist of similar songs. You can also add the track to a playlist of your own. Or you can edit the song information, including adding or changing cover art. Like in the store, Google Music attempts to suggest music for you in your library. In addition to what we already saw on the home page, you can also select a specific artist to get more suggestions. The suggestions will typically include artists from your library and similar artists with music in the music store who are not represented in your library. Of course, the best matches may not be available in the store. For Jimmy Page, there is no suggestion for Led Zeppelin, because Warner Music, owner of Led Zeppelin's label Atlantic, doesn't currently have a deal with Google. You probably aren't going to do most of your listening from the Google Music website, so let's take a closer look at the Music Manager. When the Music Manager is running, there are two ways to access it from the Windows Notification area. The first is right-clicking the icon and selecting Options. Alternatively, you can use a regular double-click with the left mouse button. On the Upload tab of the Options dialog, you will see the folder you selected to upload songs from during the initial Music Manager setup. You can also add more folders here. Each folder you select will then be added to the list. If you have the Automatic Upload option checked, any songs in the new folder will be uploaded automatically. Otherwise, you can start the upload process manually. Songs will be uploaded two at a time. You can see the progress on the left side of the window. If the files are already encoded in MP3 format, each one should appear in your Google Music Library nearly immediately after its upload completes. Otherwise, there will be a short delay while it is converted. 
You can also remove a folder from the Upload tab. This will not remove the songs in that folder from your libraries. That must be done manually. You can also download your music from your library with the Music Manager. Even though the download button text indicates only purchases from the Google Music Store will be downloaded, in reality it will also download songs you have uploaded. This is particularly useful if you want to access your music away from home without streaming it. Even though they are otherwise treated as purchases, you can't download free songs from the store. Google says they're in negotiations to allow this. By default, only songs added since the last time you downloaded will be included. You can tell the music manager to include all songs, but keep in mind this may take a significant amount of time. There is currently no option to download a specific list of songs. When you click the download button, you will be prompted to select the folder to save your music to. You can cancel the download any time before it completes. Now let's take a look at the Advanced tab where you will find several options for the Music Manager. By default, the Music Manager will send a report to Google whenever it crashes. You can override this behavior on this tab. You can also tell the Music Manager not to start with Windows automatically. If you don't need to upload or download very often, it's probably better, from a security perspective, to turn Auto Start off. If you want to make sure the Music Manager doesn't use too much bandwidth for uploading, there is an option to limit the speed. You will need to be sure you are setting it lower than your actual upload speed. For example, if you only have 800 kilobits per second upload to begin with, setting it to 1024 kilobits per second won't have any effect. You can also sign out from Google Music on this tab. You will immediately be given the option to sign back in. This is the same login dialog you will see when you initially start the Music Manager, if you have selected not to stay signed in. The final option on the Advanced tab starts a wizard where you can add or remove upload folders. This wizard is essentially the same one used during Music Manager setup, with the addition of options for selecting multiple folders and for removing folders. Finally, let's look at the last major component of Google Music. It may be the simplest part of the process, but it is arguably the chief reason for Google Music's existence. It is the Google Music Android app, which runs on Android versions 2.2 and higher. You may notice that it looks similar to the iPod app found on the iPhone, but with a distinctively Android interface. You can stream songs directly from the cloud using this app. You can also download songs to your phone or other Android device by selecting Available Offline from the menu which also includes other Google Music related options such as going to their store. Just like with the computer client, you can't download free songs from the store, but you can stream them from the cloud. The Now Playing screen in the Android app is also quite similar to the iPhone's iPod app, at least in portrait mode. In the landscape mode, it changes a little, adding more information about the track as well as thumbs up and down rating options.